guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to show you guys how to paint this flamingo landscape today. We're going to be working on an 11 by 14 primed and stretched canvas. Here are the following colors and I'll be posting them all below in the description of this video as well. I've got bright aqua green, Windsor Newton cerulean blue hue, light ultramarine blue. We're going to be using titanium white and for the flamingos we'll be using neon orange and neon pink now don't worry if you don't have these specific colors you can use any other colors that are fairly similar to this so you don't have to have neon paints you can still use any pink that you have any orange and mix it with a little bit of white so let's go ahead and get started guys we're going to begin with the sky and the water so the background first and for the sky i'm going to be using a little bit of my light ultramarine blue this will be um, sort of an underpainting as well for part of the water. So I'll show you, it's a really cool, cool trick for making it look like you have depth in the water and maybe some, some reefs and some rocks down there. And then of course, I'm just gonna use a little bit of my cerulean blue. Okay, so I've got a large blending brush. This is a filbert, it's number 50. I've been using this a lot for my backgrounds. And those big round brushes that you guys have seen me use many, many times have finally bit the dust. They're starting to lose all their hairs now, so that's why I'm using this one more and more until I can find some more of those brushes. But this one works really well. All right, so I'm going to start along the top. I'm going to use my light ultramarine blue first because I need this for a base in the water as well. So I'm just going to get set up here. Hope you guys are all doing well. I'm so excited that you're here today and painting this with me. Okay, we're all ready to go. I'm gonna start up at the top where I want my darkest blue to be, darkest part of the sky. This will help add perspective. So it's really nice when your brush kind of splits apart like that because you get those instant little peaks in your clouds and neat patterns and movements start to happen just organically and on its own. It's really fun. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of water, a little bit of white right away. Just come in here and soften. I'm gonna leave some areas white. So see how adding a little bit of white and water gives you more of that creamy oil paint look. Okay, I'm gonna come down with a little bit more blue, or white now, not blue. I've got blue left in my brush. So I know I'm just gonna gradiate down, make this lighter in tone. And then right away, right into my, I'm wiggling my brush so I get the shape back, right into that blue. And then the horizon is gonna be right here. Don't worry if you don't make it perfectly straight. There's little islands and mountains and stuff going on back, that, back there in the horizon, so don't worry. Then I'm gonna leave a space and come in here. A Little bit of paint left in my brush. Just pull some skinny lines across. Nothing too, too in detail, right? That's just for our underpainting, and then we're going to go over top with our turquoise. Okay, so now I'm going to go up top again, right up top again, not even washing my brush out. I'm going to take my both of my blues now. See what a pretty blue that makes? And I'm going to go right in here, over top, not over everything. We want different multi-tones of blue. Can push my brush like this and get in there and make smaller looking clouds in between just by doing that. Okay. And again, a little bit of white in there. Wiggle, wiggle, get that shape back. And we'll come in here and just soften really soften that out pick up some more white see if you get a neat perspective when you kind of bring it up 
and have it on a slight little slope like that. I'm gonna get a bit of water on my brush and just sort of, I'm gonna turn my brush this way and just start making little patches like this. Little, little scumbling wiggles, shaky with my, with my hand and my wrist. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that and come down here. All this does is give us that little bit of shadow and ripple effect in the water. Now my brush is pretty big, so I'm gonna switch over to a smaller brush now. And let's see. I'm gonna use a little flat brush. Uh, I don't know, the numbers kind of disappeared on this as well as the paint. I'm gonna just get it a little bit wet. And I'm gonna start scumbling around. Moving some of this paint around, sort of zigzagging. Just letting a neat ripple pattern take shape here by doing this. I can go up here and take some of this off too and make it look like we've got a nice shallow area right up here. You can create a little sandbar if you wanted. There's so much you can do and I really love the tropics. I love the Caribbean and and ever since I can remember grade school, I mean I've been painting palm trees and tropical islands. It's just one of my favorite things. Going right back into my blue now. And I want to create more depth in the water here so I'm going to go over with another layer. That way, I'm mixing just both of the blues up now because I'm kind of running out of the other blue and combined together, you can still get a nice rich blue that'll work well down here. And I'm gonna work on a little bit of clouds. I'm gonna be using Another filbert, it's just sort of a medium size, I'd say a number eight or nine. And I'm gonna take my white, a little bit of blue. So we do this gradually. Just gonna start tapping. I want it to look like there's movement. Can we get a bit more paint on there? I've got a lot of videos on how to paint clouds as well as palm trees and all things tropical. I have a whole playlist, so look down below for that if you guys want to see more in depth. Now I tend to paint my clouds pretty fast. When you get that quick little wiggle in there and work fast with your paint and your brush, that's when you get all those natural little peaks forming. It's when you hesitate and take your time that you're going to get unrealistic looking clouds. So that's the best advice I've got for you guys today when it comes to clouds. If you want something to look more natural, okay, I'm just going to keep coming in here with a little bit more white. I'm going to add more white to part of the clouds. That will give them more of a 3D look. So I'll just pick a few areas here. So yeah, I'm gonna just tap, wiggle, and dab. I've got quite a bit of paint on my brush. And so you can turn your brush. What happens when you just kind of turn and roll it like that? You get all sorts of random little shapes on your clouds. And we can come in here and get more of a layered look. And then we need some little ones here that come down off in the distance. Maybe a little something going on here, right? Okay, something like that. 
And then sometimes I just create a soft little bit of something going on in the background. I'm gonna take a little bit of black now. I don't use a lot of black in my paintings, but I'm gonna combine this with my blue and I'm gonna add a little bit more to the horizon to make the stand out as well as the clouds. So first I'll take some white, some blue, a little bit of that black, mix it up and get a real creamy looking deep blue gray there. I'm just gonna very lightly scumble over some of these areas here. So dry brush. So if you dry brush over part of your clouds, you'll get that really nice depth to them. You don't want to do too, too much though. Otherwise it's going to look like there's a storm coming. I mean, depending on what you want yours to look like. If you want a storm, well, that's how you're going to do it. You'll just add a little bit more. So I'm just going to scumble off lightly. That black is really strong, so a little goes a long way. You could even wipe a little bit of it off, like I'm doing here, and you'll still be left with a hint of that. And sometimes that's all you need is just a little hint. A little bit makes a big difference. Okay, now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna take my cerulean blue. That's all I've got left. And I can definitely use this alongside a little bit of my black. And I'm gonna go right up on the top. And I'm gonna to switch to, I'm gonna go back over to my little flat brush. Remember this one, guys? I'm just gonna go, because I can control how much I'm adding here, a lot easier. So just little, you just steady your pinky on your canvas. And I'm going up on a curve on purpose. I like that neat, dramatic, exaggerated perspective. And creating little bumps for little rocks, mountains, islands, whatever may be going on back there. Okay, wash my brush out. And I'm just gonna clean this up. back into my white and I'll just add a few more areas here to really set my clouds off. So just little bits of layering, right? We've got our shadows in there. Now our highlights will show up even better. And oftentimes I'm just using like the corner of my brush, guys. You push, push off on the corner. If you want to make it look like some of them are just floating away, little things like that. Fun, have fun with your clouds, guys. Don't let them stress you out. All the years of teaching, my students have always gotten so stressed out over clouds. Okay, I wanna move on now to a little bit of a peachy tone down here. Um, let's see what we can use. I'm gonna take a little bit of my luminous um, yellow if you don't have this color, just use a very light orange, light yellow, mix it with a bit of white. You could even use yellow ochre, that would work well. And I'm gonna take a little bit of white. I'm gonna take a little bit of green, my turquoise. So a little something like that. And I'm gonna start, so this again is the un part of the underpainting. 
pushing it on the tip of my brush. Use a little bit of gray in there. I want this to show up a little bit better. So just little ripples like this. Really water down my brush. Even do a little bit of a wash, a slight wash over it. I'm going to stay away from that area up there. Okay, so I like that. The next thing I'm going to do, clean, clean brush now, dry, a little bit of white, and now I'll just be adding little hints and flicks of straight white. So the, th the canvas is white, but then there's titanium white. When you get these little bright little wiggles and squiggles, it's going to really set off all those, the reflective atmosphere of, atmosphere of the water. And you can see I'm not paying too much attention, not thinking too long about where I'm going to apply it. I'm just going for it. As long as I have a little bit of everything and it's not all one color, you can't go wrong. Okay, I'm going to dry this off and then we'll come in with our, our turquoise over top. While that's drying just a little bit more, I'm going to add a thin layer of this ultramarine blue. And I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger brush this time. Another flat brush. This is a number 10. And I'm going to get it a little bit wet. Take some of that blue. And I'm going to go over a little bit more water. See what a difference that makes? just by adding some water along with it. Put that black horizon line even further. I'm gonna come over top, layer over where I added that black. Make everything a little bit softer and creamier looking. Let's see where else? I think a little bit right there. And okay. Now I believe we're ready for our turquoise. Ooh, I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite, favorite steps stages. Okay, I've got another flat brush. You can use any flat brush, blending brush that you want to do this. It's a large area coverage. So I've got a number 12, in case you're curious. It's a little bit wet. I'm going to start on the tip of my brush with that paint, and I'm going to go right across the horizon, right underneath. If you go over part of that, that black, it's fine. It, it'll just even help it look more out of focus and, and in the distance. I'm going to take a bit of water on my brush now to really loosen this paint up. So pay attention to where we added that blue to make it look like it's got more depth under the water. Oops. Okay. Then as we come down a little bit lower, we can soften with a little bit of white. And what we can start doing is just creating all these little wiggles and squiggles. This is where we're going to have fun and play around with our beautiful patterns in the water and all that reflectiveness that's going on. Reflectiveness? I don't know if that's a word. I just made it up. <laughs> and just keep going over. And I 
we go. We've got our, just like that, with a few taking their time to add a few layers. If you want to make it look like it's a little bit shallower back there, all you do is just gently pull and sweep off with your brush. Take off some of that paint. Got a sandbar in there. You make up your own tropical place, whatever you want it to look like. You want them to have more green. You could even add some phthalo if you wanted. It's all up to you guys. Now I've got a really small liner brush that I'm going to use. This one's definitely seen better days. I hate it when I get those brushes and the paint starts to come off. I'm going to get this really wet. I'm going to go right in, roll it around into that white. Twist and roll, pull, so I have it on the tip of my brush. And give it with those little squiggles. Just a little bit. A little bit of something. Okay, now we can dry this off quickly and start on our flamingos. Okay, so now we're going to start on our flamingos. Uh, I think I'll do two. Um, of course, you guys know because you've already seen the thumbnail for this. But right now, I'm contemplating. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to go back to, actually I've got a few options. So I've got a filbert brush I can use. And yeah, I'm going to use a small filbert brush and a small round brush. Again, this one here, number four, Royal and Lay Nickel Zen. I like the Zen. They're really nice brushes. And this one is just no name from Amazon, but it's lasted me a long time. And it's a number two. So I'm going to use my round brush first to just freehand my flamingos. You guys know me by now. Um, if you're just tuning in to my channel for the first time, this is how I approach. It's just my personal preference. I enjoy freehand. I like to use the brush, but go ahead and approach yours however you want. Sketch it out first. And I'm just going to get my brush a little bit wet. Of course, we dry this off first and I'm going to take white. I'm going to do the outline in white first for these flamingos. We're going to keep it really loose, simple and easy, guys. Don't stress out, try to enjoy the process and have fun. Okay, so we're gonna place one right about here. We're gonna come up with a head like that, a little bit thicker. So just go over and then the beak will be right about here. Bit of a lumpy head and then around here and then we're going to go up then down kind of reminds me of a, a duck or a swan right now I guess maybe a swan So just keeping it simple, lightly, loosely painting it in white first. And then I'm going to come over and add a really cool one right about here. So what I'm going to do is come down here and add one right here, a line first that you can't really see, can you? Because it's kind of, just picture a line that goes across there and what his leg is going to come down here. So that's why it's on angle like that. 
and then scoop down and go up. Let's try that again, down and up. You'll see it better when I come in with um, the pink. Your head up and down. And then the body, you can see that. Okay, I'm gonna come in with the pink now right away because I know this is really hard to see. We're gonna be using the Neon Luminous Pink by Holbein. I'm gonna add a little bit of my Neon Orange, same brand. And we're gonna get a gorgeous coral color in with our light pinks. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start taking a little bit of that pink. A little goes a long way, doesn't it? A little bit of that pink and white. And we'll start. I'll take a bit of orange now. See, so I need to adjust that a few little areas there on the head and of course the beak will be black so we'll leave that for now and we're going to come around under here right down Use extra pink here, making this slightly darker. Some of this area to give us those shadows. A little bit of orange. Where you want it to be darker, maybe I'll use less white, okay? And I'm going to come in now with the feathers. And the round brush, this round brush I'm using is great for this. It's the perfect width, actually. And I'm going to take a little bit of black with my pink right away. Need some shadows. I'm going to start just on the inside here. Beak. I'm going to come in here. A little bit like that. I'm gonna wash my brush out. I'm gonna come over with some white now. Right underneath here, we'll go ahead and add some white that mixed in. I'm just going to brush over this area here. Take a bit of my black 
it. Pull the beak. And try and we can't really see an eye in the picture, but there's definitely a little shadow indicating that there's an eye somewhere in there, but we can't really see it. So I'm going to come back down now with some of my white and my pink, bring that down there. And then add some white again on the top. where the light's really hitting. Just kind of dab that on there like that. And I'll be able to do better detail um, on the feathers as the paint dries. So I think it would be a good idea to just quickly do the legs and then we'll hop over to the other, the other flamingo. my little flat brush quickly for a second so see this area down in here and if I can get this yeah I can get it it's not totally dry yet I just want to make that a little narrower so already I'm liking that better just taking a bit of that paint off going up with it and then I'm gonna go into my pink that's tinted with a little bit of black and I'm gonna come right underneath. Okay, now I'm gonna add my legs, or leg. <laughs> they stand on one leg, don't they? Okay, we'll take a little bit of that pink, black mixture, a little bit of orange in there too. I'm going to have a little bit of water just to help loosen that paint out of my brush. And right about here, my leg's going to be slightly on an angle. Not too, too much, so just a little bit like that. And then I've got a little reflection, a little reflection going on in the water there. I'm going to use just a little bit more black now right under here but just so that it, I don't want it to look see-through so I want to make sure that it's not see-through and then there's a little something maybe that's that's other leg kind of hidden back behind there And a little bit of white right there. Go back to my pink and my orange. I really love this combo for, I mean, flamingos, you can do some light pink ones. They all have, uh, different strengths and color in color to their bodies so you can add as little or as much as you like and that's the nice thing about it right you can't really go you can't really go wrong if you want to add more color it'll look cool and if you want it softer it'll still look pretty I'm just going to get a little of that dark color we used for the leg, watered down. Just right in here, I want to have that separation with the body to the head and neck area. Okay, so I'm going to move over onto this cool, quirky looking one. And taking my round brush again, a little bit of white, orange, pink, spun colors.
We're going to do a little line like that. Come up. So we've got the head there. So it goes up, down. Looks like a snake right now. Kind of like a snake. And we'll do a circle here. I'm going to pick up black right away without washing my brush off, just so I can see the beak. So it starts to make a little bit more sense to you guys. Add some shadow. And now we'll go into the body, so I'm going to go in here and just start patching in some color. So I know that it's dark, a little bit darker here. So that's just the pink, orange, white, and a bit of that black. And we'll use a little bit more of the pink right here. We can just keep adding more as we go along. And then we've got that leg in there. It goes right out. Let's line this up. So we've got a leg coming down here. And then the reflection is kind of taking us over here a little bit. I'm going to go into my black. Carefully go inside this leg. I'm going to go under here. Right off the canvas. And we're going to pull and meet right over here. So you're almost making a triangle. Almost making a triangle. Let's pull it right to here. Almost touching the other leg. And then come down. Pull and then come down. I want to make that leg a little bit thinner. So I'm going to go back to my damp flat brush. And I just need to turn the canvas a little bit towards me just to be able to do this a little bit better. Right, the leg is just a little bit too thick, so we need to push off some of that. Looks better already. We can take off a little bit there too. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of go swoop down. We're going to go over top of that, but it's nice for some shadow. See, we can, we've got so much there, we can take a little bit off and use it. I'll make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. So adjust my easel a little bit. And I'm going to scumble that and use it for the ripple down there. Okay, now I can come over top of here and start adding my light pink. So I've got my light pink here. And I'm going to add some highlights. Where I want it to be really bright, like right in here, I'm going to use more white. Just by getting it on the very tip of my brush, that nice bright titanium white. 
and down there. There's a bit more sunlight. And use a little, little bit to soften this area here. And then I can't forget about that little scoop down there where part of his leg starts. Cover up that black and create a little sort of a half circle there. And I was using my round brush and I think I will go back to that. I don't know how I ended up with this one right now, but I did have my flat one. And I'm gonna pick up, tell you what, I'll see how I, how I do using this brush. If I need to, I'll go to my round one. And these feathers are gonna overlap or part of the leg there. Kind of go up and over and over like that. Using a little bit more pink and orange at times where you just want to have uh, some more color. So in this case right here where it's that dark brownish color, that's a really good base for our shadow. But then you can come over top of it with this pink and orange and get that nice rich color that's still going to show the depth of the shadow. So to make the top of this flamingo stand out some more, it's kind of blending into the background. The background's too light. So I've got to kind of just do a thin little outline here and I think I'm gonna choose my light ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna push, rather than making the flamingo bigger, I'll kind of just push in against and risk making my flamingo smaller because I can make it bigger if I want, but I don't want to end up having a flamingo that's the body is way too big and have it kind of funny looking so and then I mean you can even just use look at how pretty that light ultramarine blue is just such a gorgeous gorgeous accent color you can even add little dabs to the leg little ripples in the water reflections it just seems to always work So there's a couple little lines there. And then there's a little bit of white that we're gonna just put right here and around there. And then a tiny, barely there, little dab for the eye. Make that come down a little bit more. going to water down my brush a little bit, loosen that paint up. I don't want it to look too patchy. And then right in here, we've got that separation where we've got that line from that wing there. So this is looking pretty cool so far. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm having fun with this. I do want to add some more depth to the wings and the feathers. So I'm gonna dry this off and then build that up with some white. So I'm gonna go with my little micro mini brush here again into my black. Let's water it down. And I'm gonna come around and make the beak a little bit bigger. Widen it a little bit more. And 
I'll go over this one just a little bit here. Kind of bring those little stripes up there like it has. Now there's something I need to adjust that's really bugging me. And it's not a big deal, but it's just bugging me, so I'm going to fix this. I'm going to take a little bit of white and cover up part of that. Back to my shadow pink, pinky color in there. Okay, I've got a little bit more now of my neon colors. And I'm going to enhance the shadow here. Saturate it. Do a few little scoops like this for some feathers. Come around here, bring that down. Take a bit of white. A little bit of white. There, that's better. And we'll come over to the other side. apply some highlights in here. Just tinting my orange and pink with a little bit of white. So we've got that pretty coral color. go over that blue where I want it to dry a little bit darker and we're just about just about done this one guys take of course I'm going to do the feathers here pretty soon that will be the last thing a little bit of white through there I've got a couple things to do I've got to do the shadow down here in the water from the flamingos so before I forget that I'm going to go and do that right away. You can use a filbert brush or a flat brush. And I've just got a flat brush here. It was the first one I grabbed. So I'm going to just water down easily, water down some of my blue. And do I have any turquoise? Yeah, I'm going to mix. So this makes a really nice color. The turquoise with that blue. So it's really watery. Okay. You don't want drips though. And then I'm just going to Come in. I know this is going to seem stressful and so wrong, but just trust me. You got to just paint what you see. Just a little shadow reflection here in the water. And then this one's going to come down here this way. Just some wiggles like that. Bring this one out a little bit farther. Just gently. I just wanted to bring it in a little bit more here. Look, I've got a brand new round brush here that I should try. It's a number four. 
I'm going to take some white and I'm going to start to go up. You'll see how much I've got on my brush. I want quite a big scoop there. Pushing that off, pushing that off. That's how you'll get those little shapes for your feathers. Where you want to have it a little bit softer, just take a little bit of your pinky peach color. Maybe add, oh, we can take a little bit of blue and black. I just need to make something a little bit darker here. So just tinting the orange, pink, white with a bit of blue and black. Get a muddy tone going here. It's sort of a plum purple color. I just want to sort of cut in and around some of these feathers to make them stand out just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to come over to this side. Just pushing that off. I'm going to be really generous with the white on the top. I'm not going to overblend. I want to see sort of a texture, you know? So kind of like that textured look, and it'll really look 3D. Soften a few areas. This has been a really fun one today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I can't wait to see your versions. Uh, be sure to post them and share them on uh, our Facebook group, Joni Young acrylic painting tutorials and thanks again for joining me today guys this was a lot of fun so i'll see you next time in another video don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more check the links down below this video and a full list of paints and brushes we used today bye everybody